Good evening and welcome to my Teresa talk on insights into the third eye, the brow chakra. So we have moved up the chakras in the throat, we had sound. Now in the third eye, we move to light, color, seeing, but not just outwardly in the world of the senses. We have inner seeing, inner wisdom, intuition. We have the capacity to visualize, to imagine. We have the beginnings of development of clairvoyance and this type of seeing or etheric vision. So Arjuna means to perceive, to know. The eyes perceive the tangible or the manifest world and the third eye sees the unmanifest or taps into the inner tuition, the inner world. So the symbol is a two-petaled lotus like wings on either side of a circle. And this symbolizes the two sides of the brain, the two worlds that we walk in, the two types of sight that we have. And this, these wings are our capacity to transcend physical limitations and go, go beyond just this reality that we perceive with our eyes. So intuition in the realm of the esoteric is like light coming into the brain, the aha, eureka, oh my God, moments. And that's like light coming into our retina, to our eyes, and the brain perceives what is going on in the world and, and what our world is. And so these this ability to go inward, not only to receive intuitional uh, knowledge and wisdom, but we also have the capacity to create visual images, to visualize and use our imagination. And more and more science is realizing that when we create powerful visualizations, for example, our body responds as if that event was happening out in the world of the senses, as if it was happening to us in the world of reality. So light also relates to, this chakra relates physically to the pineal gland that sits just behind um, the brow here into your brain. And the pineal gland is talked about as the seat of the soul. And it acts as a light meter for the body. So what it does is when natural full spectrum light comes in through our eyes, it's registered by the pineal gland. And there are over a hundred bodily functions um, that are affected by light. And this is hormonal functions in your body. And many of these are to do with our body's daily rhythms, um, to do with our sleep, to do with our energy cycles. And the pineal gland produces melatonin. Uh, and the melatonin is really important for our sleep cycle. It reduces stress, it strengthens our immune system, it retards aging and helps us to sleep. So we see that in the pineal gland and esoterically the third eye, we're starting to move into bringing the whole being into more order. Um, we could look at the seventh ray energy coming in here in terms of light. We've got an ordering and a, um, an integrating of the chakra system. So over 90% of our information comes through our eyes and we tend to code memory and thought patterns, often visually. And the idea now is that we store information in our brain holographically and that thoughts are holographic. And the mind is not actually located in one place. It's like the brain is a receiving station for the mind. And the mind, you could almost think of your mind is located in your aura. But that mind has the capacity to tap into the universal mind. And this is where we get the clairvoyance. Um, and if this information is stored holographically, um, we can tap into the field or universal consciousness through this ability to tap 
in through the third eye. So if the inner world of our thought world is uh, functions holographically and the universal, the world and the mind, the universal mind functions holographically. The question then is, are we holograms? And as we slowly dissolve our self-created ego boundaries and embrace more universal states of being, are we merging our consciousness with a greater hologram? And these are questions for you to consider. So clairvoyance is seated in the brow. Telepathy is seated in the throat, but we need the brow to fully realize and develop telepathy. And as we develop mental awareness and control, we increasingly become mentally aware of others. And this is the... Um, this is the experience of the intuition, of just knowing, of being to tune in to information, perhaps about someone, uh, some information that is found in their energy field that you just know. Um, so we start to realize that when we close our eyes and we close off to the world of the senses, we go into an inner world and when we meditate, we become aware of the vastness of this inner world, this subtle world. So when the brow starts to open, we become increasingly aware that we walk in two worlds. We have this inner world and the experience we have there of who we are. And we function as we open our eyes in the world of the senses. And it's said that we realize we have a foot in each world or that we are in the world of physical reality, but not of it. So the truth of who we are is what we connect to when we go inward and close the eyes. So this inner wisdom, this inner world and connect to the essence of who we are, our higher self, if you like. Now, behind the eyes, right here, we have the point at which the two nadis meet. Now, what the nadis are, they are uh, energy. They, you've got your base chakra and you've got your kundalini energy coiled in the base. And then coming up through, associated with the spine, but through each chakra, you have two channels the masculine and feminine, negative and positive, called the Ida and the Pingala. And as they cross at each chakra, they cause the spin of that chakra and they go all the way up the spine, okay? Uh, and these two channels, then we have a central channel called the Shashumna, which is when energy is able to move directly between the chakras. So often it moves through the Ida and the Pingala, but in some times in our life, it, it moves through the center. And these two centers, the Ida and the Pingala, finish in the third eye. And this is also this idea of balance, of balancing two sides, because the Ida and the Pingala are the masculine aspect and the feminine aspect. And there are yoga practices, especially breathing practices that can help bring those two into balance. And I'll teach you that um, after I finished talking a bit more about the third eye. Um, intuition. Intuition is a difficult thing because it's something that's difficult to describe in words. Okay. And something that people often ask me is, how do you know how to trust your intuition? Uh, and as with we get increasing clairvoyance, we also get increasing, we can get increasing mental psychosis and different problems with the third eye. And in our culture, often the intuition is seen as a dubious source of information or wisdom. 
because uh, we tend to place reliance and credence on a scientific view that's logical and rational and can be measured. And this defines our reality. So something that's a bit more wishy-washy and you can't explain rationally and you can't give logical steps or explain how you came to that information is not valued in our culture. And so often because it's not valued, people don't use their intuition and so they don't trust their intuition because it's like anything the more you use it the stronger and clearer it gets and as these chakras start to open and the the third eye chakra will not open significantly until the others are open um, the person becomes increasingly aware of different knowledge or wisdom coming into their being that's not coming through a rational process of weighing up pros and cons or coming to an understanding that way. And often it's an irrefutable, it's just something you know to be true. It has a quality and an essence and an energy to it that's hard to describe, but even harder to deny. You can't deny it. And part of the reason that we know it to be true is because our soul, the essence of our soul, has the qualities of truth, beauty, and goodness. Uh, and because our soul is truth, beauty, and goodness, we have an inherent ability to recognize these qualities. Okay, that's why beauty is in the eye of the beholder. We can only recognize beauty because we are beauty. Same with goodness, the quality of goodness, we know what it is. The same with truth. It's like we have our own internal truth ometer that we can learn to trust. So when you practice meditation, and you learn to quieten the lower mind, to quieten the chattering mind. Increasingly, the mind calms down and the thoughts slow down and there's more space between them. And you can, uh, as soon as you slow the breath down, you'll find there's more space between the thoughts. And what can happen then is because there is space and because you have quietened your being and quietened your mind, so you are in a receptive listening state, your soul, your higher self is able to drop pearls of wisdom into the space. Now, this is actually happening all the time, but our mind is chattering so much that we don't hear them. Have you ever noticed that, um, for example, if I have a problem or a decision I need to make and it's just, I'm just not getting there with it. I weigh up the pros and cons. I look at different people's opinions and I just can't come to it. I will abandon it and I will abandon what I'm doing and I'll put my boots on and I'll go for a walk in the woods and I will just focus on being in nat nature and allow it to clear my mind. And nine times out of 10, before I've walked half an hour, 40 minutes, the perfect answer, the perfect solution to that problem will just pop into my head like a light bulb. Ah, oh, that's it. Why didn't I think of that? And what it is, is I've come to trust that process. And what it is, is that answer, my, my higher self, my higher mind, my soul was trying to give me that answer, but my lower mind was trying to work it out. It was getting in the way of that intuition. And this is where in Bailey's work, she talks about the intellect as the slayer of the real, or sometimes an overdeveloped intellect stops us from trusting and being open to these moments of inspiration and understanding these intuitional knowings. So many people will trust it when it has a more visceral, physical feel to it. So many people will trust intuition if it's a gut feeling. Um, I think I read that 80% of the top entrepreneurs in business in the world say they always follow their gut. 
um, Einstein is quoted as saying that some of his most profound revelations came to him in a moment, full, complete, absolutely. It's like he downloaded it from the cosmos. And he knew it was true and he knew it was the perfect answer and something he'd never considered before. And then he has to go away for about 10 years and do the maths, use his lower mind to prove what had come as a moment of inspiration, because otherwise it would not be credible and people would not believe it. Okay, so the intuition is something that you can come to trust. Um, and when you do, you step into a beautiful place of flowing with life. There's a certain amount of letting go of the need to be in control and trusting and surrendering. And it's not easy, especially for us in the West, to just surrender in that way. <clears throat> but you feel like you're dancing with life. You're just waiting for the next guidance to come. And it does. And there's synchronicity in your life and the serendipitous things happen and <clears throat> miracles become quite commonplace and there becomes a real trust in this inner knowing so many indigenous cultures um those especially they have often developed the intuition and they value it they hold it in very high esteem and the tribe or the elders will seek counsel from those who are more intuitive sometimes it's the grandmothers sometimes postmenopausal women are seen as more intuitive um, the shamans or the medicine women are all seen as being in touch with knowledge and wisdom beyond what can be worked out in the physical world of the senses. In our culture, there's a mistaken belief that somehow women are more intuitive than men, or men don't have this capacity. Yes, it's an inner quality, it's a feminine quality, but we are all a balance of the masculine and the feminine. And there's actually no reason why women should be more intuitive, except that in our culture, it's more acceptable for them to be, okay? To, and that's more, women tend to be more in touch with others and how others are feeling, more able to express emotionally and to tune into others emotionally. They're trained as carers, and so this awareness becomes more finely tuned, and that's the only difference. The capacity is there in everybody. And as these centers open um, and the vibrations that you naturally function at raise, so you will naturally become more intuitive. In my experience, it's just the way I live now. And it takes time. It took time to trust it. Um, it's not the way we normally do things. If we want to achieve something, we focus our mind and we concentrate. It's quite the opposite. It's a surrender um, and allowing. So we open up. We expand by going inward, if that makes sense. And it's something that you often know something is right or you just know something. Uh, and even if you can't explain it. And sometimes when your intuitive messages will come in symbols, in the words of a song, in a feeling, in a pull in a certain direction, it's really in the same language that the usual thoughts in your mind are. It's just instant. Uh, sometimes if we seek this knowledge, we can go deep into meditation past the stage of concentration and focus where we're focusing on the breath or a mantra or a candle and just drop down into a state of deep stillness. And in that state, we can just ask, or just allow what we're seeking answers and guidance to to be in that space. And sometimes you'll get answers straight away. Uh, sometimes it won't be 
it won't be, you know, in words or written out for you. It'll be symbolic or you will have to go away and think about it a bit. It may come in dreams that night. It may arrive in the words of a song or someone sends you an email. There'll be some coincidence in the next little while and you go, ah, that's it. Thank you. Um, and the... You've got to relax and surrender for the answers to come. I can remember a time when I had to do a lot of healing because it felt like this inner radar was broken. Um, things were happening in my life and I was like, it's broken, it's gone. Why is this not working anymore? And I had to come back to trusting it. Uh, so as our society, as we progress and become um, so that we value both the masculine and the feminine, this capacity will develop. Um, as the third eye opens, though, there comes with this capacity to know, to have this insight, this intuition, there comes with it a responsibility. And as we move up the chakras and we start to open and become increasingly aware, our conscious awareness expands, our vibration lifts, and we become more sensitive to the energies of our environment. We become more sensitive physically to negative energy environments, to toxins. Uh, we become our etheric body, our energy body becomes more sensitive to other people's energies. And we start to become more sensitive, pick up on people's emotional vibrations, and we will start to be able to read people's emotions. And we increasingly become aware of um, mind or mental vibrations in a, a, a beginnings of telepathy. And we also will start to become just aware of a whole essence of the person. Um, and so what comes with this is a moral and an ethical responsibility. Um, now, if this is a natural spiritual development that has happened, usually those qualities will have developed along with the increasing capacity to tune in to other people. Um, however, when people undertake practices that prematurely open chakras, one of the dangers, not just the real dangers in causing mental health, um, psychosis, psychotic type problems, but one of the problems that can happen is the person's moral and ethical development, their conscience is not in line. Um, sometimes you can get people who are quite clairvoyant, who are mediums, um, but their spiritual development is not in line with the opening, um, their ability to channel from universal consciousness. And that information will have to come through the filter of their personality. And you've got to be very careful trusting this information because it is coming through a filter and a lens. It's not coming through purely. Uh, and again, you have to um, use your discrimination, discern whether that person seems to be of a high level of spiritual development and therefore what they're bringing through has credence and value. There also comes a responsibility to look after yourself to be careful about the energy environments that you place yourself in. Um, and I think as the chakras open and we become increasingly sensitive, this is natural. Quite often we will, I know I find myself, there's no way in the weekend you will find me in a busy shopping center with lots of people. You'll find me off on my own up in the hills. And part of the reason is that sensitivity. I can literally be walking along. And if I'm open and just being myself, I'll be picking up all sorts of things by about all the people walking past. And it's it's like overload. It's like being in a, a visual stimuli overload situation, but it's an inner, you just, you don't want to pick up all that information. And so you have to look after yourself and limit those type of experiences. 
The other thing to realize is sometimes these capabilities can open, but if the capacities are there in someone whose intention is not a will to good, who hasn't um, an open heart that is working spiritually toward the good, um, these capacities could be used for control and manipulation, could be used in uh, a, negative, a negative way. Okay, what I want to do now is have a look at some information about this chakra. The archetypes when it's balanced, when it's out of balance. Okay, so you can see the symbol there with the circle, the third eye, the wings, the two petals, the downward pointing triangle as we bring insight, spiritual insight down into matter. So it's bringing through the light of understanding, the light of inspiration. Now, the two archetypes that we get with the third eye. So when, when the third eye is open uh, and vibrating at an ideal, we get someone we would call the psychic and they listen to their inner self. They recognize the wisdom of the third eye and commit time to contemplation, meditation and stillness so that there is time and space for these messages and these, this guidance to come through. Often we find these people are exceptional artists, therapists and healers because they can really tune in to the people they're working with. And in terms of art, they can bring through amazing creativity. The rationalist is a person who's absolutely doesn't tune into their feelings and insights because maybe in childhood this was ridiculed. Um, so they try and abide by a set of rules that become increasingly limited and isolating by completely denying this whole side of their being. If the third eye is too open, a person can become too logical, dogmatic, so not open to the flow in life, to the new ideas, to expansive ideas, to insights that change your view of the world. Um, can become quite authoritarian because they don't they want their view to be the view and even arrogant if it's blocked um, because this is a chakra about bringing order so we talked about the balance of the Ida and the Pingala bringing order into the physical body in terms of the light of the pineal gland order into the cycles in your life the person can be quite undisciplined quite erratic. There can be a fear of success, setting the sights low. So th the center is starting to work on a higher level in terms of the will, uh, can have problems with schizophrenia. Balanced, you get someone who is charismatic because they are tuning in, they're open, um, they're highly intuitive. Don't not particularly material. As we move up, we're right up in the higher spiritual vibrations now. And sometimes um, you get people who experience unusual psychism, all sorts of things as they become aware of other dimensions, of other planets, of beings um, that we're not, we don't usually see with our eyes and start tuning in the veils between uh, dimensions and worlds and things become uh, much finer. So physical dysfunctions in this chakra can be headaches, problems with your vision, neurological disturbances, glycoma. Something I wanna say here, sometimes in meditation, as the third eye is starting, starting to open, people can be quite frightened as they'll get a feeling, it's not a pain in here, but it's a feeling like it, like that feeling if your eyes are rolling back, it's like in the center, something is rolling back and opening and can be a little bit painful. And then it opens and you go into a much more expanded awareness. Um, and I often say to people that if they mention this when they're 
in meditation, they've been meditating for a little while. Don't be frightened by this. Relax and allow it to unfold. Um, glycoma, emotional dysfunctions. Because we're working in the realm of um, the imagination and the capacity to visualize, nightmares and hallucinations can be a problem with the third eye. And sometimes learning difficulties um, because they're so removed from that logical, rational intellect and, and we're sort of off in the right brain, um, not really <laughs> structured at all. So just looking here, uh, Sagittarius and Pisces, and we talk about it as being the sixth sense, the colour um as indigo and the, the meaning is to perceive or to know so perception is the information we take in through our eyes and we formulate a view of the world we run it through our own filter of all our unconscious beliefs of our past experiences and we formulate a view of the world to know bypasses all of that. It's like taking in um, wisdom that doesn't run through that personality filter. It comes direct from the soul. Oops, sorry. Let's go back. Okay. The oils that help to balance, we've got geranium, uh, violet, crystals, Amethyst, fluorite, azurite. Uh, we've covered all these. And this is the seat of emotional intelligence. Okay. That gives you a better understanding of what's going on with the third eye. Um, Intuition is something that you come to trust. And as you become clearer and as you, you practice med practices like meditation and you have that capacity to step back from your usual thoughts and create space in your being and in your mind, you find that this, this develops a beautiful relationship um, with your soul because it's almost like the soul knows that you are giving time to listening so it pours through amazing insights and it's almost like the more you listen the more there is to learn and uh, your soul just wants you to grow and develop learn and learn so there's a beautiful relationship and rapport that the third eye, like those two petals, it develops a beautiful rapport between your personality vehicle and your soul. So with the opening um, of the third eye, living life intuitively becomes a natural way of being. Um, it's difficult to describe how that is, except that it's your first port of call when you when if information beyond what you use in your everyday life is needed, um, you that's where you go to seek guidance. And increasingly you start to realize that actually because through the intuition through the intuition, through the third eye, you can access all information, universal consciousness, universal mind, um, you, something that you come to cherish, okay? It's no longer scary, becomes a very natural way of being. And you feel like you're even more in tune with things and even more in touch with life. And yes, there is a, you, yes, you are aware that you walk in two worlds, but you bring that wisdom from that inner world into this world and in that way we spiritualize matter we bring those higher vibrational spiritual energies down into the more dense frequencies of matter so what i want to do before we 
um, have the group meditation. So I just want to teach you a technique for balancing the Edu and the Pingala. And it's an alternate nostril breathing technique that we use in yoga. And this is completely safe. This will balance the masculine and the feminine within you and just bring you into a place where you, breathe, you feel like you're breathing through the tip of your nose. So in any part of the day, you'll find that you're breathing through either your left or your right nostril. If you're breathing through the left, when you use your right side of your brain, when you're thinking big picture, creatively, music, that sort of thing. When you're using your logical, rational, problem solving um, type of thinking you'll be breathing through the right nostril and it naturally just moves so in yoga what we do is we bring them together and then you're able to breathe and the energy flows through the shushumna through the center through the the chakras so let me teach you how to do this so take your index finger and your middle finger and place it on your forehead then you're just going to block your nose alternatively with your ring finger and, or you can use your little finger if it's easier, and your thumb. So if you block the left side of your nostril and breathe in through the right, then block the right, open the left, breathe out through the left, and breathe in through the left. Block that nostril, open the right, breathe out through the right. And breathe in through the right. Close that nostril, open the left, breathe out through the left. And now just notice, where's your awareness and where are you breathing from? And how do you feel? Do you feel quite calm, quite balanced? You only have to do a few cycles and that will bring you into a very balanced central point and help to be in touch uh, with your truth intuitively. So namaste. Right, let us now go uh, into the time of where we come together in meditation. So get yourself comfortable. You want to be reasonably upright without being rigid, <clears throat> ideally feet on the floor. So just let everything that um, Ted has been talked, talking about go for now and I want you to come into the space of your heart and we're going to come together as a group and we do that um, by repeating this affirmation of love so silently or out loud repeat with me if you will in the center of all love I stand from that center I the soul will outward move from that center, I, the one who serves, will work. May the love of the divine self be shed abroad in my heart, through my group, and throughout the world. Now just gently close your eyes. And I want to begin by grounding our energy. So imagine that you are sending a connection down into the earth under the building in which you are either through your feet or through the base chakra at the base of your spine so that we come into alignment with our planet with our place in the grand scheme of things Now I want to bring your conscious awareness into this moment in time. So just notice your body sitting on the chair. Become aware of the clothes on your skin. And 
now take that awareness to your sense of hearing and just allow sounds to come in. And now take this awareness to your breath. And just gently notice the breath come into your body. Notice the breath as it leaves. And just let each breath be a little deeper. Letting your breathing slow down. as we slow and deepen our breath, so we create space in our mind. We slow the thoughts down. So just feel your body relax. And imagine that as you breathe, you are opening a channel right down through the very center of your body, between your sternum and your spine. And with each breath, you open that channel until it feels comfortable to breathe right down into your belly. Keeping a gentle focus on the breath, allow your awareness to go inward. Just breathing in a natural way for you that is comfortable. And just keeping the focus on the breath. If your mind becomes distracted by thoughts, by physical feelings or by sounds. As soon as you realize, just come back to the breath. Come back without judgment or criticism. Come back with loving kindness. And just let the breath take you down deep into a quiet place within you. And as you connect with the breath, you will find that you step back from the thoughts in your mind. You become the witness. Thoughts will still come into your mind, pass through and pass out of your mind and you simply observe them. Coming back to the breath whenever you find that your mind has gone off on a train of thought. Now I invite you to take your focus to the very center of your chest. And imagine that you are breathing into your heart center, into the space between your sternum and your spine, gently opening, expanding this space. allowing a very natural and beautiful opening, as gentle as a bud of a flower opens into full bloom.
Now feel your heart filling with love. And we open the heart when we bring the quality of gratitude into our awareness. So in your heart, allow a feeling of gratitude to grow. Gratitude for the blessings in your life. And as we open the heart, so we open the door to a connection with our soul, our higher self. And now using the creative imagination, I want you to bring white or violet purple or gold light, whichever resonates with you. Envisage it coming down through the crown of your head. and down through the major energy centers or chakras in your body, vertically associated with the spine. Imagine that it is your heart that acts as a vessel to receive and distribute this lighted love throughout your body. So your whole physical body is filling with this purifying, cleansing, healing light. Bringing health, vitality and strength to your physical vehicle. Calming your emotions and bringing peace and clarity to your mind. So as your physical body fills with this lighted love, allow it to flow out now into the energy field or the aura, the etheric body that surrounds your physical body. You may lose awareness of your physical body. Now allow this lighted love to radiate out to fill your home. Let it flow into all beings that you share your home with. All living consciousness. Now allow this lighted love to flow from your heart in your home, out to fill your whole street, your whole neighborhood. Touching the hearts and minds of all people, consciously or unconsciously. And continue to radiate this lighted love until it fills your whole town or city. Now imagine that it joins with the energy from everyone involved in this group meditation, whether live or through the recording. And together we fill this whole nation with lighted love. Now imagine it flowing out into this part of the world to encompass all of Europe. It continues to flow until it fills the whole Northern Hemisphere of our beautiful planet. 
and continues to radiate out until the whole southern hemisphere is filled as well. And in doing so, we join with all groups throughout the world who are working in this way. And together we fill the whole of this planet with these powerful transforming energies. Now imagine that you can see our planet as if from space and you can see an aura, an energy field of this lighted love surrounding her and then see it flowing down into all living beings. See it healing our planet and restoring the balance in nature. Cleansing and purifying the air, the waters. See the animal and the plant life restored, healed and flourishing. See the light touch the hearts and minds of all of humankind. Igniting the desire for peace, the will to good. And developing right relations within each individual, between individuals, within families within communities, within nations, between nations, between the whole human family. Lifting our awareness and the collective consciousness of all so that we can learn to live with peace, to find harmony through conflict. Visualize these energies unifying and eliminating all divisions within humanity. Healing and transforming human consciousness and establishing right human relations. Now continue to hold a space in your heart to allow this lighted love to flow out. Joining your group brothers and sisters together. We bring peace to our world. See all fear dissolved. See all people lifting up into the vibration of love. Into higher understanding.
And now I invite you to come together and we'll repeat the world prayer, the great invocation. <clears throat> As you repeat each stanza, I want you to visualize the world of spiritual energies coming down as a channel of love and light and divine purpose to flow into human consciousness. So we'll pause between each stanza so we can visualize the words as they play out. From the point of light within the mind of God, let light stream forth into the minds of men. Let light descend on earth. From the point of love within the heart of God, let love stream forth into the hearts of men. May Christ return to earth. From the center where the will of God is known, let purpose guide the little wills of men, the purpose which the masters know and serve. From the center we call the race of men. Let the plan of love and light work out and may it seal the door where evil dwells. Let light and love and power restore the plan on earth. Ooh. And now gently draw your energy back into your own energy field. Take a nice deep breath in and just come back into an awareness of your physical body. Slowly moving, opening your eyes when you're ready. <laughs>